So here's my coyote tail. Now, I literally just pulled this out this morning, and I wanted you guys to see what it looks like when you pull it out so you don't think, oh, if you decide to do this, you get to this point, and you're like, oh, I think I made a mistake. You didn't. Okay. So what I do when I get, so like in this case with this coyote tail, I strip the tail off of the animal, right? You slice it down, and you strip it off. Inside, you have to get as much, no matter what it is, no matter what kind of pelt, no matter if it's a bone, no matter what you're doing, you have to take off as much of the fat meat as you can without tearing the skin. That's a tricky thing. So it's a process that needs to be done slowly, carefully, and you'll do it. That's the toughest part, is not cutting the skin or removing too much and then hair falls out. Anyway, um, the next time I actually get an animal to do, I will film it so you can actually see the process, but this is more about the preservation. So once you have the pelt, this is what you do. So once you have it and it's cleaned off, all I do is use salt and borax. And you can just use salt, and it's table salt, guys. It's regular salt from Aldi for like 50 cents for one of those big containers. Yeah. Um, what I do, like in this case, everything, it's absorbed all the humidity, so it's in big chunks now. I put a layer down. I put the skin side of the pelt after I've rubbed more borax and salt into it so that it's really, really, really saturated. Like, when you think you have enough, you don't. Do more. Then I put skin side down in the borax and salt, and then I just put a heavy, heavy layer of borax and salt over the top of it, and I put it somewhere. Like, this has been sitting in here for, I forgot about it, so it's probably been two or three months, at least two months. Um, and then what happens is, Bacteria has to have moisture to grow, has to. So what you're doing is, is the salt and the borax are removing that element. It's absorbing all of the moisture out of the surrounding air, but also from your pelt. So when you pull it out, now this pelt's already been, I washed it and cleaned it before I did this. It looks like this because it's been sitting in the salt and borax for forever. But as you can see, it's completely dried up. This is the skin. And it's completely hard, it's completely dried up. I haven't cleaned the borax off because I wanted you guys to see. So it's gonna stick to it, and that, that's what you want. So this one's done. I can clean this one off now, and then you comb out the hair gently. Um, and then you can use it for whatever you want. So that's one way, that, or that's how I do this. And that's why I prefer small animals because this is a really easy and affordable way to do this. Um, so that, that's this little, like, little tail. You can do the same thing with rabbit pelts, probably. Um, I think that there's other ways to do rabbit that it might even be quicker, but I'm not sure. But this is how I do this. Now, with this, I do the same thing for any of my animal bones. I've got borax all over the floor in here. <laughs> so, like, for these guys, for these guys, these are just turkey vertebrae that I had from Thanksgiving. Turkey, literally. And, you know, you clean them all off in the sink, get all the stuff out. Um, in here, this is going to be kind of graphic. So if you're not into this, well, you probably wouldn't be watching this video anyway. But see that hole? That's where the spinal cord was at. So that all has to be taken out. And then what I do is, since I was already doing this coyote, I put it all in there together. Um, the bones you don't have to do that with. I've done it too, where I just cleaned them off and put them on the counter to dry, and they did just fine. These were kind of wet, so I just thought I'm going to throw them in there to get them all dried off. So that's turkey vertebrae. That'll work with any bone. Um, okay, so here, so on my property, I found a ring neck pheasant, a male. Um, I assume he was hit by a car. I don't know, because the body was in really good shape. Um, so I harvested his feathers, his tail. His, both his wings and his skull. Um, and so here is that. Here's his skull. I'm working around the tripod here. Now this skull, I haven't bleached it. I don't, okay, so I don't bleach my bones, but that's just personal preference. But he's, uh, he's dried. He's ready to go. I, could, I still have to get like little bits of this stuff out of there, but I haven't really decided what I'm doing with them yet, so I'm not in a big hurry. Um, also, if you're going to do birds, really important, I'm going to see if I can show you here. On this side, 
you have this little bone right here. It's like an ear bone. And on this side, it's missing because it fell out. It's very important to keep something under your skulls and small animals so that when bones do fall off, you, you don't lose them. This is the piece. This is the ear bone that fell off this side. Now, if that happens, all you have to do is glue it back on with some kind of a clear adhesive, super glue, or, or whatever, whatever you prefer. So that's my pheasant skull. And from that same pheasant, I got both of his wings. Let me zoom out a little bit. Both of his wings. Um, this one I use for when I'm smudging something or cleaning some, cleansing something with smoke. That's how I prefer to do it. Um, and all I did was, same thing, he got put in the borax and salt. And around here where the bone is that holds the wing together so that it can open and close, I just covered that with a piece of leather. Um, a friend of mine actually has the other one. So I made that. And now this one, I haven't mounted it because I, I wasn't, I have an idea what I want to do with it, but I haven't really executed it. But anyway, so this is his tail. And it's absolutely stunning. Like I said, the next time I get a bird, I will do a video and show you how I pin mine out. And it, again, that's really easy too. But borax and salt, where the meat would be after you get it good and cleaned off and it's pinned and it'll dry in the shape that you want. So yeah, it's, this one's really nice. I'm pretty proud of this tail actually. And then this piece here. So yeah, so uh, all this borax and salt, nothing fancy, no fancy chemicals. Didn't have to sneak myself out of anything. Um, and, it's, and it's absolutely, it's, it's doable for a regular person. You just need time, lots and lots of time. Um, I have a, I currently have a, uh, let me turn the camera around. Um, right now I have a coyote skull that I have and here's how I'm handling him. Skulls are a lot of work, a lot of um, detailed labor intensive work. And now what you could do is if you had this setup, which really is just a box that you can put the skull or skeleton in of the animal and then you can order in what's called dermestid beetles and they will make pretty quick work of it for you and you don't have to do anything. I don't have that set up right now. Um, but so what I decide to do is I have a, like an old bucket or uh, a nursery pot that you put holes in. And then you just put the whole head in that pot. You dig a hole in the ground that is just the size of the pot, a little bit deeper, put it in there, backfill the dirt around the skull in the pot. Fill the whole hole in, mark it so you don't forget where you put it. That'd be a fun surprise for somebody to find later. Um, and then in a few months, come back and check it. I will be checking mine in, I think, April or May. And I don't know how far along it'll be at that point, but we'll see. But the idea is that, that the insects that are already in the ground, some of which are, are beetles, are going to come in and they're going to handle things for you. Um, and at least the, the, the big hard parts will be done. And then there'll be minor cleaning that you'll have to do, but it won't be a big deal. So that's the idea behind that. Uh, like I said, it takes time, but if you're not in a big hurry, then it doesn't really make a difference. So um, yeah, so this is something that you can do if you are, feel so inclined um, to do it. It's not hard. It's cheap. It's a fun little hobby. Uh, if you have the stomach for it, it works out. It works out pretty good. So uh, all right. Thanks, guys.